always good that we can come together and be inspired by the word of Yahweh God. Because as it said, man does not live by bread alone, but by everything that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh God does man live it by. I say that there's two things that we must really be initiated to into that had to, to give us total clarity, and that is that we're Israel and that we must master the law. Israel is a blood right. It is a, it is a you have to be born into it. It is an inheritance by birth. It's not a religion. It is a nationality. And therefore, to understand this and what it really means is to understand what we must do. I would like to start off with what is made mention in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 10, and Jeremiah 10, Jeremiah 10, verse 16, it says, the portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things. So what portion, if Jacob portion is not like them, and he is the former of all things, that means that Jacob has to be attached to what is the former of all things. Because it said Jacob is the former of all things. So Jacob has to have an attachment to what is the former of all things. Yahweh God, being a great God, telling the children of Israel a great story of the circumstances that relates to them. We have to realize that what connects us to our God is so unique in all in that we must go into the Apocrypha and we must go into into the Apocrypha so that we might understand our relationship because this means that much to us to where we will have and know how to travel the absolute path. It is said in the Apocrypha in Judas when we read in Judas, um, chapter 5 of Judas, the Apocrypha, chapter 5 of Judas, and it is a time when it says, Hela, uh, Hela Phineas the chief of the captains of the army of Assyria. This story of Hela Phineas tells of him coming to conquer the children of Israel. It says, then was it declared to Hela Phineas, the chief captain of the army of Assyria, that the children of Israel had prepared for war and had shut up the passage of the high country and had fortified all the tops of the of the high hills and had laid impediments in the campaign comp countries wherewith he was very angry and called all the prince of Moab and the captains of Amos and all the governors of the sea coast and he said unto them tell me now ye sons of Canaan, who this people is that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their armies, and where is their power and strength, and what king is set over them, or captains of their army, and why have they 
determined not to come and meet me more than all the inhabitants of the West. Then said Akora, the captain of all the sons of Amos, let my Lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people which dwelleth near thee and inhabit the high countries, and there shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy servant. This people are the descendants of the Chaldeans, and they sojourn here to in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the God of heaven, the God of whom they knew, whom they knew. It says, worship the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and with very much battle. So not to to go and read the whole thing, but if you do, it's very interesting. But the whole jest was it, he told him, he says, when he told Heliphanius, he says, he was warning him because he's telling the history of the people. He says, and Willis, and Willis, they sin not before their God. They prospered because Allah did hated iniquity was with them. He says, and they cast forth before them the Chaldeanites, the Prejudicites, the Jebusites, and the um, Sakamanites, and all the Jebusites, and they dwelled in that country many days. And while they sinned not before their God, they prospered because their God that hated iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives in, into a land that was not theirs. So he telling them, he said, but at, at going on, he says, now therefore, my Lord, and governors, if there be any error in the, in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their God, Yahweh, Defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. So he was saying that it was on the contingent of them keeping the commandments, that they would have this restitute. That's my fault. That they would have th th this restitute. And he told them, he said, well, what you should do, if they have sinned, we can beat them. To this very day, this is what will enclose us into our salvation of righteousness. We must become masters at the Torah so that we will know what not to do. We must know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are the children of Israel so that there could be no doubt and we must master that law, knowing not to sin. As it says, in the book of Numbers, it told us what sin would do. 
In the book of Numbers, chapter 32, 23, 32, 22, 32, 23. Well, if you will not do so, That's right. This, our sin, was the worst enemy we could deal with. Because when we sinned, it meant that we were in the path of ruin. There was nothing that was going to hold anybody back that will save us. Yahweh God told them that their sins would find them out. And therefore, we should be careful to not to participate in the transgression and perpetuate it. It also said that in the Apocrypha, in 2 Ezra 16, 2 Ezra 16, Second Ezra chapter 16 in the Apocrypha. Verse 72. It told us, For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold, as gold in fire. So and that's uh, um, Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. 76. 76, 72. The guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said Yahweh, Allah mm-hmm. let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. In other words, your sins are as much alive as you are. Your iniquity is as much alive as you are. And they count to how you move. That's why he said, he said that Yahweh God judge every man by his own works. Why what you do is what you judge by. Yahweh God don't judge you by anything else. He judges you by what you do. And therefore, if you understand the movement of your action in this world, you will know. Now, the point is, is that when you begin to keep the commandments of your Yahweh, you unfold within yourself a perfection. That's why in the book of Proverbs 24, stay where you at, and shall not he rendered to every man according to his works. So Yahweh God will render to all of us according to our works. The finest works that a man or any of us can indulge in is the commandments. The commandments smooth your life out. Keeping the Shabbat is very important because this is a commandment. When we look, he says that these things will weigh you down. They will weigh you down so much that the more you participate in it, go and say, read 77, it says what? Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. I mean, bound, in other words, all they do is a sin. They don't, they don't take no opportunity to divert themselves. They, they, they lay it on as you lay a, 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 a frosting on a cake not knowing that it would be better just to have a little bit, but they just pile it on. It's, it's never a re- they never reduce it. They only increase it. Go ahead. Bound covered, with, it's a, covered with their iniquity. Covered, see, it's two things as mentioned. Sin and iniquity. Two things. It's a difference, it's a difference because it's it. Iniquity and sin. Sin is the act, iniquity is the abundance of the act. Your iniquity, but your sin is the individual, but the iniquity 
is the conglomeration of all of them. Go ahead. And covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes. That's right. Go ahead. And the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. Yeah, because it becomes to the point where they have become so laden and so thickened with their iniquity that they can't find their way, way back. And it sticks them, even when they start to go back, it's thorns. And they'd rather go forward than go back because it's such an agony to go back. Because there's thorns there. They have been so ratted, rattled with doing that which is wrong, they don't want to participate in any. And even if they get the thought of doing something wrong, it bothers them. It bothers them to do anything right. So the thing is, is this. That's why Yahweh God says to us in the book of Ecclesiastes, and these are why we, we, we try to find out. This book will answer all your problems, anything that you want to know. This book will tell you. In the book of Ecclesiastes 9.18, 918 mentions what it says. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. That's right. One, he said, one sinner destroys much good. So when you, you, you must not engage yourself with people that are sinners. When you see that they're sinners, you remove yourself out. Because Yahweh God has promised you something. Let's go into the book of uh, um, Psalms 125. Psalm 125. 125, verse 3. For, for the robe of the, of the wickedness shall not rest upon the rock of the, the righteousness. Let the righteousness put forth their hands into iniquity. So he said, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. And he's saying to him, your whole salvation is based on righteousness. And the only way you can do it is that you got to follow the rules of the Torah. Keeping the commandments relinquish you from sin to acquire iniquity. This is what it does. But it is so bad that even here we're at the point. Let's go into, I want to show you what Revelation says. It is that bad. It is that bad. Revelation 18. Revelation 18, verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Allah have remembered her iniquity. That's right. He said her sins has reached. That's how, how much. And who is he talking to? Read verse 8 down to that. Therefore shall her plan. No, no, let's go, let's read verse um, 1 of 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the, the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and a hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. For all nations have drunk her of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth were waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plague. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Allah have remembered her iniquities. So it's telling you. Now, 
the, 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 the Bible collectively, there is truth in the new and the old. And by having the spirit to discern, I want to take you to something that is, is that I feel for, for myself. I understand that my people are in struggle. And I understand that the men among my people are laden in such pain. They're having pain. But this pain is unrecognized so that it can be somewhat of a barrier so that they won't proceed further. But yeah, our God said something very interesting in Zephaniah. In Zephaniah, he, make, he makes a statement that though it burns them, they still persist in the foolishness after as though they recognize, they don't recognize the, the aggravation that they're receiving for their dis disagreement and, dis and, and misunderstanding of the grievances that they hold down so tight. Yahweh God says that it burns them. It sets them on fire round about. But he doesn't make that he doesn't take the attitude to free himself from this agony. And it says here in Zephaniah chapter one, verse seventeen, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. He said they have sinned. And when we go into Isaiah, uh, uh, Isaiah 42, Isaiah 42 tells you that this sin that they participate in is not going to be withdrawn from them. Let's go to Isaiah 42 and let's read 25. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about that he knew not, and it burned him, yet he made it not to heart. Yeah, see, they're not lay they're not really understanding that the very circumstances that they're in. It's the circumstances that will answer the questions that they can get out. But if they're not having, this is one thing about the shabbat. The shabbat gives you that rest time so that you can cultivate another approach into your whole life. You cannot approach doing, being insaturated in the sins. That's why she said, come from among them. Be not play, you know, turn off the television, close your house, come from among them, because if you constantly saturate, you become partaker of their transgression. You'll be a participant in the movement that ain't going nowhere. So you turn it off to come into understanding what does Yahweh God has for you, you as an Israelite. And this takes strategy by make, coming into understanding yourself and what you want. You want your kids to survive, then you sit down and teach them a superior knowledge. Your kids ain't gonna survive with their degrees, whether it's a doctorate in math or science. You have to have a mastery of the Torah to keep from what? Transgressing the law. You can't get it no other way. There ain't going to be no other way, whether it's due to, to discussion. Either you're going to be obedient to the commandments of Yahweh God, or you're not. And therefore, if you're not going to be obedient, then all you can do is, as it has been stated very clearly, when Hakamah told the people, he said, look, I'm going to laugh at you in the day of your calamity. Because when I called you, you didn't want to listen to me. You understand? He says, 
You didn't want to say anything, anything I tried to say to you, you made a mockery out of it as though I was giving you. And therefore, we must understand that there's no other way for us if we don't take that which our God is giving us. Because it's no other way. How, how, tell me, what can we give our children greater than the wisdom that is put in this book? It's nothing that we can give them. And therefore, we are left silent and without words because our words cannot help our children. It, 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 will, not, it will not engage our children into the salvation that is necessary because wisdom says in Proverbs 1 starting at and I will start at verse 23 turn ye at my reproof behold I will pour out my spirit unto you I will make known my words unto you because I have called and ye refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but ye have said at naught all my counsel, and would, and would none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mark when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then shall you call on me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of your house, they would, they would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof, therefore shall they eat the fruit of what? Their own ways. See right there? Say so they gonna eat the fruit. So if you think your degrees your money, your children <laughs> is going to save you whether someone hates you, whether you like by the enemy. It's not going to help you one bit. Only thing that's going to help you is that you have a love, not only a love for the commandments, but that you will do. There's no, there's no other alternative that is given to you other than that you serve your God. Now, if you don't want to serve your Howard, then you got to remember, then you will meet your end. Because it's the only way. You, you're, not, you're not looking for the day of destruction, because the day of destruction is coming every microsecond. Someone is dying, whether they're dying naturally or they're dying by some uh, uh, intervention of, uh, of carelessness or somebody being reckless to take somebody's life. Someone is leaving every word that come out of my mouth. Someone, whether it be baby, whether they're coming in the earth and they're dying, coming through the mother's womb. Somebody is leaving this earth. Someone is, is being tortured. It's something is happening on this planet. It's never nothing happening. There's always something happening. There's monsters being bred, there's angels being bred. And I'm just talking about the attitudes of people. Mm -hmm. There was a day that Hitler was born. There was a day that Idi Amin was born. You understand? There was a day that Papa Doc was born. These were monsters entering into the world to what do more harm than you could ever, because see, you can, you can hurt a family and it stretches into generations. Oh yes. People have been so placed in poverty that if you gave them some money, they would enjoy poverty more than they would enjoy riches because they have exercised themselves. You got people that have been rich so long, they, can, they, they would do anything to remain rich. They don't ever want to see poverty. They will do anything to have the substance of this earth so that they would not feel the stink. The same thing. 
There are people that, what do you do with a lot of money? They're 